people on live. I like to do a snippet, probably do about 30 minutes, and then I'll shut it off because some things are intimate. Let's go ahead and pray in. It is 7 o'clock. You know, I always, um, tonight is going to be very intricate. We're going to be talking about spiritual warfare and battle ready. I'm talking about, let me tell you something. God woke me up at 4 o'clock this morning. You all, it's real. The battle is real. I mean, and I I, I took a little nap because I had to. I took a nap around 5, I would say 5.45. No, no, that's not real. 4.45, got up around about 5.30ish. So, you know, but all, all is well. But it was what God showed and told me. Oh, my God. We better get ready. This is not a game. And even the ones that think you're on assignment, trust me. The real assignment, that's what you're really in it for. Now, you in for the other assignment. But trust me, this equipment, oh, I didn't made up a word. You're not from Louisiana. I promise you, you're going to need it. So let's go ahead and pray. Always cover yourselves. This is a snippet of a spiritual warfare battle ready class. All right. Always. I don't, um, somebody, always when you come on, please mute yourselves. Please. You don't know how to do it. No, it didn't. No, that's somebody. And the crazy part is, whoever this somebody is, they're not even putting up their name. Y'all understand what's happening here? So, okay. All right, let me go ahead and pray in. Always equip yourself. I don't care where you're at. A lot of people say we don't need all that. That's what the church got to go back to. We stop doing what we know to do. We, well, I'm going to tell you, we start being grand. We start being popular. We start being this. We start being that. Always anoint yourself. So I've already done it. I'm talking about computers, everything. You can say what you want. We're going to get down and deep tonight about um, spiritual warfare. God gave me a prayer. Um, this prayer is so powerful because it came straight from the Holy Spirit. And I plan to put it in a book. That's how powerful it is. I was like, oh, I was right. I was trying to write. And oh, this was at four o'clock this morning. I'm trying to write. I'm trying to hurry up with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All right, here we go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care what you do for the Lord, whether it's a prayer call, whether you're just with your family, friends, or you praying by yourself. Always give him glory by praying. Praise God. Praise God. Father God, we just come to you boldly to the throne of grace tonight, God. First of all, just thanking you. Thanking you that we're here. So many people, Father God, you are calling home. And then some are actually just going home because of their choices. Yep, I have to say it like it is, especially in this hour. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you teach us to make good choices. Oh, Father God, you say, choose this day who we're going to serve, either you or mammon. We cannot serve God and mammon. So, Father God, I just thank you, God. I thank you because you're real. I thank you because the presence is real. I thank you because the power is real and you are real in our lives, God. Father God, I pray that we learn to grow up in you, Father God. It is time to mature to go to the next level, not being our emotions, not acting offended, not acting this way, not acting this way. But, Father God, I pray that you grow up and start with me first, Father God. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. God, do what you're going to do in this hour, Father God. The power of God is in me for 2023. That's not just a slogan, God says. God says this is real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, I just give you honor. I give you praise, Father God. I've asked you. I've asked you so many times. I've asked y'all. You know, let me tell you something. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear you, God. I know it's a distraction, but let me tell y'all something. I I'm not perfect, I promise you, and I'm not trying to bash you. But this is all I got. Y'all ain't ready for me. I don't play with God. You can accuse me of a lot of stuff, and I might be guilty. I'm going to be real with you, but I don't ever play with God. And so I would never permit a person to. So new rule, you keep coming in here without your mute, I'm just going to dismiss you from the class for tonight. And then you do it again, you dismiss, period. All right, straight up. It's just like that. We can't play with God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Father God, I just thank you for a spirit of order. I thank you, for God, Father God, for a spirit of respect. Father God, I thank you, Father God, also for patience. In the name of Jesus, continue to guide me. This is your class. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come in here, Holy Spirit. Do what you got to do. Change what you got to change. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, this is your class. This is your people. And I would do just as you have called me to do. Hallelujah, God. But also, you say, be 
gentle as doves, but wise as serpents. So, Father God, I pray that everybody that's listening, that we flow with a wisdom and discernment, a spirit of wisdom and discernment, God. That we learn what tenacity is. God says, in this season, you're going to go through much. You're going to be tested much, he says, because he has to push you into your destiny. He has to push you into your calling. He has to push you into your mandate. He says, it's not going to feel comfortable. And this is fresh off the press. When I say something like this, it's coming straight from the throne of God. I hear it right now. This is not later. This is not a con. I don't play games. I'm hearing God right now say this. He said, that's why it's been hard lately. He said, because I got to trust you when you can't trace me. Come on, somebody. He, she said, God said, I got to trust you when, I, when you can't trace me. Because here's the deal. You're not going to always feel God. I had to learn that. I had to learn that. God said, there are times when you have to know him. There are times when you have to feel his spirit within you, not just around you. Because we like to say, oh, I got the chills. I got this. But sometimes it's going to be a word of encouragement. Sometimes it's going to be a hug. Sometimes it's just going to be silence where God is speaking into your spirit. And he's telling you, this is what I want you to do. He said, in this hour, you have to obey instructions. I'm telling you, that's what he told me months ago. He said, Deanna, I'm taking you to a place. Well, guess what? He's not just taking Deanna. He's taking you. He's taking you. He's taking you to a place. You've asked for it, you've begged for it, you've cried for it, and now it's time to prepare for it. Hallelujah. God said, because I can't take you if you're not prepared, because you're going to do like somebody else doing. Uh-oh, I got to call it out. People get a reprobate mind when they stop following God, when they stop hearing God. That's why you hear, you see them men and women of God, great men and women of God. Yes, I'm saying something. I hope you catch it in the spirit. When they start going astray and they start wanting to do this, that's not of God. That's because God has said, go ahead. Let me let you do your thing until you fall because you will fall. Come on, somebody. God doesn't want us to fall. So God said, in this season, learn of me. Respect me. Let me teach you. And those that I have sent to you to prepare you, allow them to prepare you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So, Father God, we thank you for the preparation. We thank you, Father God, like Romans 8, 28 says, the good and the bad work together for those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. We don't like the bad, but Father God, teach us how to go through the bad. Teach us how to keep on going, not to be discouraged, not to be frustrated, not to get offended. There it is right there. The enemy will come and try to offend you, try to distract you. And it's okay. The Bible says, be angry, but sin not. I'm telling you how he's coming, thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah to his name. So, Father God, I pray that in this class that you have your way, God, in each and everybody's heart and even those that are listening, Father God. It is about you. Purge us, Father God. Purify us, Father God. Let us be able to dwell in your presence. I just said something. Let us be able to dwell in your presence because most people, you have to go in and out because you can't stand that holiness because that holiness will burn you up. Come on, come on, somebody. It'll burn everything inside of you. Hallelujah. It'll make you cry. It'll make the toughest man, the toughest woman cry because the presence of God. Hallelujah. So he said, learn to dwell in my presence so I can change you. He said, that's where you change. He said, that's where I heal you. That's where I deliver you. That's where I do what I do. Hallelujah for the power of God. So Father God, we just thank you. We give you honor and we give you praise in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I hope you got what you needed because I felt the presence of God. I really did. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask you all again. Callers, if you don't know how to meet yourself, um, you better learn the um, instructions. Go to um, go to meeting and find out how to meet yourselves. Because I realize some of you are older, but some of you, you know, before, and I'm going to teach like this because I have to. I realize this now. For the ones that are unaware, we're going to put it that way. When you do things like this, you got to be real serious about it. I realize God is everywhere, even on here. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let's go to our Bible. So now um, we're going to start class. Praise God. So here's how God told me to do it. God says from the first hour, I want you to just go ahead and teach all the way through. The last half hour, I will give you, I will open up and I want you to tell me what you need what you're feeling, what's going on with you. And to be honest with you, you may have a word for someone else, but hold on. I'm a know if it's authentic or not. So make sure it's God. Because just like, I, I don't know who it was that said that, 
But one of you that took the class last time, you said that, um, you know, and the way I teach, you don't know who God going to use. Come on, somebody. And, and that's what's wrong with the present day church. And I'm not trying to bash anybody or anything like that, but they kind of like make it seem like um, just I'm anointed. The devil is a lie. Most of you in here are anointed. Notice I said most because some of you are still processing. It's not that you don't want to be anointed. You're still touching the unclean thing. And so I'm going to help you to try to dismantle that unclean thing because that's where I come from. Alcohol, drugs, everything. I never thought I'd, sit, I'd be sitting in this position. Never. Uh -uh. And, and truth be told, I like to tell the story because it's true. When God started calling me, I couldn't even get high no more or drunk. One day I was just trying. I said, I called the guy who I got my little issue from. I said, hey, you sold me something bunk. What's going on, bro? <laughs> I'm serious. God had took it from me. Come on, somebody. I saved that for a reason. Oh, let me go ahead. Some of you still smoking cigarettes. That's your last little thing to get rid of. I'm not judging you, sis. I did that too. But here's the deal. It's stopping the Holy Spirit. Because the, the question I want you to understand, can the Holy Spirit dwell in an unclean temple? He can. He can. He can. All right, let's continue. All right, Psalm 49. Psalm 49. Hope you have your Bibles. All right, this is what he woke me up to this morning as well. It says, always come to class with your Bible because we're going to, again, and I'm teaching and training at the same time. God may have one of you start a class one day. God may have one of you do, do a Bible study. Always open up with prayer and the word of God. I don't understand people that don't have no Bible and you got a whole church, but let's continue. Hear this, all ye people. Let me put my little light on me. Hear this, all ye people. Give ear, all you inhabitants of the world. Verse 2. Both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. Verse 4. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. Verse 5. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil? Are we not in the days of evil? Come on, somebody. God did this, the Holy Spirit. He said, when the iniquity of my hill should come past me about, verse 6, they that trust in their wealth. Y'all better catch this, and y'all better mark this down. This is one of the most powerful ones I have read in Psalms. Praise God, praise God. Marcel, can you mute yourself, hon? Thank you so much. All right, praise God, praise God. It says, and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. You know, and while I was reading this, I have to tell you what the Holy Spirit was showing me. The Holy Spirit was showing me not just Hollywood, but even in church. We get we we tend to think if we got a big bank account and this and that, that it won't hit us. Can I tell you, God will allow anything to hit you. You can have zero cents or you can have a million dollars. And that's why a lot of people don't know how to handle it, because they're trusting in their riches and their wealth. And not in the word of God. Oh, let's continue. Verse 7, it says, None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. Verse 8, For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceases forever. Verse 9, That he should still live forever and not see corruption. Verse 10, For he seeth that wise men like likewise, the fool, and the brutish people perish, and leave their wealth to others. Mm. Verse 11, their inward thought is that their houses should continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Oh, y'all understand exactly what's happening, right? Verse 12, nevertheless, man being in honor abided not. He is like the beast that perished. Verse 13, this their way, this their way is their folly. Yet their posterity approve their saying, Selah. Now, y'all know what posterity means, right? <laughs> Verse 14. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death should feed on them, and the upright should have dominion over them in the morning. And their beauty should consume in the grave from their dwellings. Verse 15. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me, Selah. Verse 16. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich. When the glory of his house is increased. For when he died, he should carry nothing away. His glory should not descend after him. Verse 18. 
Though while he lived, he blessed his soul, and men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. I, I got to stop there for a minute. Isn't that real? And I've seen this my whole life. And again, I'm not bashing anybody, but the truth is the truth is the truth. I've seen people that are wealthy. Let's say they have friends around them. Their friends will give to them. And yet the person down the street may not have a bread. They'll talk about them. Y'all, a man I've seen in my whole life. I'm vice versa. I still bless people. But I'm sorry. I got a heart for poor, poor, because I'm just saying we're supposed to. You know, I'm not saying let somebody run game on you, but I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Verse 19. He should go to the generation of his fathers. They should never see light. Verse 20. Man that is an honor and understand it not is like the beast that perish. And this was the word of God. That was Psalm 49. Praise God. Praise God. I pray that you get some paper out because this is the prayer that God gave me this morning. And when I say gave me word for word, I'm trying to write fast. I, I was like, Lord, I used to write script fast, but Lord, have mercy. I had to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, please slow down. Okay. So doing this spiritual warfare class, I said, God, you know, I told you I was going to start doing this like I used to do in 2014. I said, God, what do everyone in this class need? Now, I know we got the books. I know we got the Bible. This is what he told me. He said, a lot of them is hurting. A lot of you, let me go ahead and, and read you right now. And, and I'm one of you as well. And people out there as well. We have learned to be strong through the test, through the tears. Fake friends, fake family. Come on, I'm about to walk down your street, honey. I'm talking about, you, you've had so much bad stuff and so much pain and so much uh, betrayal, Judas and all kind of stuff. You had no choice but to say, you know what, enough is enough. I got me. I love me. Come on, somebody. I'm not try trying to talk about being arrogant. But you had to say, I can't die like this. I have to be strong. And sometimes all by yourself, that's a horrible feeling. But God said, I'm still with you, though. So this is how you got to do. You got to ask God, God, send me people that have your heart. Because you see, when people really love God, they'll treat you right. I mean, say they're going to do everything you say now. Because a real friend going to tell you the truth. Hallelujah. A real friend going to tell you the truth with love, sometimes kind of stern. So this is the prayer that God made me write. So I pray that you're ready. Got your paper, your pen. It's called Spiritual Warfare Prayer. And I'm going to try to go slow. But... If I'm going fast and you need me to go back, just go ahead and say, Prophet, let's go back. No, I don't mind. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Another thing God was saying, they don't know how to pray in my son's name. When you're praying, everything, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God taught me this about five, six years ago. I was just saying, Jesus, he said, there's a lot of Jesuses that the devil implement. So can you specify? So always specify. All right. So Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I accept the authority that was given to me in Luke 10, 19. I accept the authority that was given to me in Luke 10, 19. Praise God. Praise God. I accept the spiritual and the supernatural power. So I'm going to go back. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I accept the authority that was given to me in Luke 10, 19. I accept the spiritual authority and the same supernatural power that was in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do you know how powerful that statement is? Because you know how he said, because I go to my father, you should do greater works. That's why we haven't seen it. He said, you have to ask for it. And not only do you have to ask for it, he says, you have to be ready for it. So let me continue. It says, and the same supernatural power that was in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I now have, I will walk in my spiritual authority. I now have the same power. I will walk in my spiritual authority. You have to walk in it. Quit letting the devil tell you you're, you're not this. Quit letting the devil tell you this or that. You have to call those things as be not as though they are. And I, I'm going I'm to tell y'all some secrets to the kingdom. And I don't know if y'all going to believe me. But I know the first thing everybody need 
is a financial blessing. Start tithing. But to the person or persons that God tell you, don't tithe to where everybody tithe. I'm sorry. I'm telling the truth up in here tonight. Everybody, well, I'm tired. I ain't going to say no name tonight. But y'all know what I'm saying. I did that a couple of times. Nothing. I, I see. So then I start being obedient. I'm talking about, I don't even know some of these people and God say, give them a thousand. I say, huh? Okay, God. I, I have to hurry and do it because I ain't going to lie. You know how you start analyzing, well, I don't know them, God. Uh, God know them. And I've been blessed every time. And some of the people, What what are y'all experiencing? Somebody say they're experiencing something. What are you experiencing? You sound a little far. <laughs> and it's kind of hard. It's, it's coming across, but you sound a little far. How can I sound far? I'm right here, huh? Come, come here. Hold on. Just one moment. Just one moment. Okay, hold on. All right, so what we gonna do? We can go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and put them in. Now, no one knew this, right? Does anybody have the last um part of the prayer she just said? Okay, hold on. Just started with like I now have the same power. Hold on, just one moment. I'm gonna um actually put some headphones in. Just one moment, you guys. All right, you guys, I'm going to check out of here for right now. Just want to give you all a snippet. God bless you. Y'all know what time it is. Roll out soldiers for that is truly who we are. God bless.